Little Latin Loopy Lou was a song that I wrote, uh, oh boy, I, I probably was 19 years old, and uh, Loopy uh, was a girl that I went to school with, Loopy Laguna, and actually we dated for a while. And uh, I was writing the song, and I just loved that title, and I loved the way it sang, you know, talking about Little Latin, dun, 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 and it just fit, you know, what I wanted to do. And, uh, and Bobby and I, we were in a group, the Paramours, it was five of us, and I taught, taught the song to Bobby, and, and uh, you know, this Ray Maxwell, who was the owner of Moonglow Records, came in to see us, because I'd, I'd, I'd done some background work for some of his people. And I said, you know, uh, listen to this song me and Bobby do. So we sang it, and he said, boy, I love that. I said, we ought to record that. I said, oh, are you kidding? He said, yeah, no, let's record it. And, but we, we didn't want to go under the name The Paramours because it was just Bobby and I doing it, not The Five Oaks. Well, uh, we were, uh, Bobby and I were raised in Orange County, California. And uh, uh, there was a, a Marine base there. And a lot of the, the black Marines heard that there was these two white guys down the street Singing, singing rhythm and blues, so they would come in and 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 uh, like if you saw a great '57 Chevy, a white guy would say, "Boy, that's a cool looking car." If a black guy saw it, he'd say, "Boy, that's a righteous looking car." And uh, and if they liked you, they, liked you, uh, their friend, they would call you a brother. So sometimes when we were coming to work, they would say, uh, "Hey, righteous brother, how you doing?" Which meant good friend. So we said, and once in a while they would yell out at the end of the song, that we, hey, right, you know, that's righteous, brother. So uh, we, uh, when we did a little Latin Loopy Lou, uh, we said, let's use the name that the Marines have been calling us. And we wish they would have yelled out, that's Beatles, brother, but they, <laughs> but they didn't. And, uh, and, uh, and you know what, we, we recorded the song and, and nothing happened with it. We, then we went down, uh, another friend of ours came and took us down to this place called the Rendezvous Ballroom in Southern California, which was a surf ballroom. It's where Dick Dale and all, I mean, we were a fish out of water. We were R&B guys. We didn't even want to go down there. But we said, ah, okay. And we would sing it, and it kind of fit the, this surf dance that they were doing. So they said, um, they said, boy, we love that song. We said, well, you know, we record it. You probably can go out and buy it. And uh, or, or order it, and they went out and ordered it. The, 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 the uh, record store said, never heard of it. So they, so Bobby Hatfield and Mike Patterson, uh, who was our, ended up to be our road manager, took about 1,500 of, of these things, took them to the record store, said, listen, if you sell them, you sell them. If you don't, make Frisbees out of them. And uh, then we told the kids, here's where you can go buy this thing. Well, 1,500 kids went down and bought this, bought this record. And in those days, and God, I wish these days were still happening, the, some of the, the radio stations would call the record stores and say, what's, what's selling? So they would kind of know, that's how they knew what this uh, and, uh, and the lady said, well, sold 10 Elvises, I think five Everly Brothers songs, and some record called Little Latin Loopy Lou by the Righteous Brothers, we sold 1,500 of them. And he says, what? He says, send it to me. Send it to him. And in those days, you know, this is like 62, the disc jockeys were always doing record hops. You know, they would go to the local high school or something. You know, and, and so he was advertising his record hop, and he put Little Latin Loopy Lou in the background. Hi, this is Gene Weed. I'm going to be down at the so-and-so club, and they're playing Loopy Lou in the back. And uh, uh, some kids called up and said, what is that record that you were playing? And, and so he, he played it a couple of times, it took off, and we never looked back. If you listen to it, you know, and so I just wrote lyrics because I had that melody, you know, and uh, so I just threw all those lyrics in and 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 and, uh, and yeah, it's a it's a it, it's a stupid little song. I wrote it so I can say it's a stupid little song. But but the truth and people would ask me who who God, who wrote? I say I don't know. I honestly I don't know. And then Bruce I heard that Bruce Springsteen was doing it in in his show, 
And I said, yep, I wrote it. <laughs> I'll write it again. So were the Chancellors, the surf band, hanging out? Because I know they recorded it, and then the Kingsmen recorded it. Yeah, a lot of guys recorded it. Uh, and and uh, so did Mitch Ryder, yeah. and uh, Paul Revere and the Raiders, and... Uh, not the group Paul Revere, no, the actual Paul Revere. No, that's how old that song is. No, uh, yeah, a lot of a lot of garage bands or gr bands loved to do it because it was real simple. Like in our day, we used to do Kansas City, going to Kansas City because it was real easy uh, and the, and it was easy to play. Well, you know, uh, little Latin Loopy Lou and my babe and a lot of stuff that we did before Love and Feeling. Uh, was real simple, so a lot of those bands uh, started doing it, and uh, and then when we went on Shindig, it kind of became uh, nationally famous because every week Elvis Presley would have his people call Shindig and say, "Have the Righteous do Brothers do Little Latin Loopy Loop?" Because him and his boys would come and see Bobby and I uh, perform. You know, when we first started, uh, Elvis just couldn't believe that two white guys were doing this. And so every week we were doing Little Latin Loopy Lou on Shindig, so it kind of, uh, it kind of became nationally known. And uh, this, this silly little song that started in a nightclub uh, started the Righteous Brothers.